next thing that uh, I need to do is I need to establish the angles on this top this way and then this way for these so there's four of these and four of these I need to get the angles for and then also I'm going to put a center line all the way down and uh, drill a couple pilot holes this is the base or the back and it'll get two screws the door or the front will only get one screw um, and I've got to put this together in order to uh, get it rigid and to get a precise angle because uh, this top piece on both of them is you know since, since it is at an angle I have to uh, cut these rabbits by hand so that's what I'm gonna do next established right there you can see the lines right there and that's my cut marks um, eight total cuts uh, so this is what's pretty much left of, of the adjoinery it's just uh, I've got a, a hand cut this part of the dovetail on the tops um, I was actually able I'm not very good with the table saw because I don't use it that much but uh, I was actually able to get the establish the shoulder so I'm not gonna have to cut that but this uh, right here I'm gonna cut um, with the Arioba. It's a general purpose Japanese carpentry saw. It's got rip, uh, rip teeth and cross cut teeth. Um, I, would, I would like to say one thing about this though. If you're going to uh, hand cut stuff like this, you know, I've got this center line right here. What you can't see is uh, I took a, a knife and I scored those lines and the reason why because if you use a Japanese handsaw the teeth depending on the size um, obviously of the uh, blade uh, the teeth are fine enough to track that line although you want to stay on the waist side of the line so I'm going to actually start this off with the cross cut teeth and establish my cut and then switch it over to the uh, uh, ripping teeth I'm going to do both of them, both edges. This is pine, so it's not the most forgiving <laughs> of wood, I can assure you. Okay, now I'm going to the uh, ripping side, and I'm going to actually take, take it down all the way. And now I've got that established right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and just walk it over. I don't know how well that's coming out, but it's from my advantage, I can see it tracking the T, uh, the little uh, score right there. You just got to be really, really careful and go really slow. And I like to go for both sides when I'm first starting out so I can get a as straight a line as I can and I want to connect those so now I've got a little groove which will uh, make it easier for me to track and I just want to keep it as straight as possible 
And now I'm going to go down the other side. And now I can go ahead and connect the dots. I will say on, on, on this type of saw, you don't want a death grip. You kind of want a pretty light grip. You want the saw to do the work. You're just doing this. Also, I want you to also understand, pull this out a little bit. The blade is tapered, so you got to be careful not to go too deep on the, on the far side. And just listen too. There you go. I just want to turn this around so you can see it. Yeah, one day I'll be able to. There we go. It's not too bad, you know? It's a little bit there to clean up. Well, actually, it's just kind of just stuff. So it's not too bad. So, yeah, I might have to take a chisel to that a little bit, uh, just a little bit, and I've already done the other side. So I've got uh, two more to do, and then I can go ahead and screw these onto the top. All right, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and lay this one out and then cut it. Um, I highly recommend, uh, this is a, which way am I going, which way am I going? This is a machinist tri-square. It's a little tiny one, and I've got, actually I've got several of them. Uh, these things come in so handy. I'm just gonna kind of show you how I use these in woodworking. I usually use these in metalworking, but these are great for woodworking too. Um, the halfway for the thickness here is nine and a half millimeters, so you can set it up on your your uh, tri-square and. transfer and you can use it like you know as such as you know and then I take those two put the mark above and then I can take my other one to the cut setup or you can re you know readjust that one but I've, since I'm doing a whole bunch I don't really want to readjust them if I, if I can help it so and then I'm going to take usually I wouldn't do it this way but this thing's angled so it's kind of hard to and it's at the end and I don't actually have all my woodworking tools available to me. They're kind of packed away right now. So I'm using a, a, a carpenter's knife, basically. But I'm going to take this and I'm just going to score down here these lines as best I can. Just go slow. You don't have to go deep. You're just scoring it. And... Uh, And it gives it a, a nice clean edge when it comes off. Then the top one you want to go a little light on the first pass, but then you want to go a couple more passes and make it a wee bit deeper so you can get a good uh, so the teeth have a good uh, line to track. I don't I don't know how to pronounce the name of this company Let's see if it'll come on that yeah, might help if I can get it well I'm having a hard time holding it there it goes that company right there however you pronounce it they make some of the best 
disposable blade Japanese saws you're gonna be you're gonna find um, definitely highly recommend them um, I, I actually have a whole bunch of homemade ones handmade ones rather and they work so much better but uh, these work amazingly well you'd be surprised if you've never used a Japanese saw I highly highly recommend trying one but uh, yeah so you score there score all the way around and make sure you cut on the waist side and like I said I like to start with the cross cut teeth because on the edges it's just a little bit easier to get it started and then switch it over to the uh, ripping little straight line ah, knocking stuff over and in case you're not familiar with Japanese woodworking most of the time they're in a kneeling position usually the substrate is lower not like the Western where it's high that's because of the teeth cut on the pull stroke instead of the push stroke. See just a little bit of stuff right there. These things are sharp enough that if you just apply a little bit of pressure and just slowly work it, I think the, the best advice for this. There you go. Don't even have to chisel it. Yeah, quite nice. Not too bad. And that's the tool I'm using, in case you're wondering. And as I was saying, about a third of the way on each side. Sorry, I forgot to turn the microphone on.
Well, here's the scary part because now we get to break it and hopefully it breaks where it's supposed to and doesn't, sh you know, crack and stuff. I've scored it on both sides. I'm going to put my foot on this and hopefully uh, bring this up and hopefully it, it breaks where I want it to break. And uh, not too bad, I have to say. Um, you got to be really, really careful. But it, it, you know, if you do the, right, you know, if you do a good job, it, it does, it, you know, it breaks pretty easily. Um, I've got one more uh, to score and break. I'm gonna do that off camera, and then uh, I'll be back. Well, I've got the uh, uh, the acrylic cut. I uh, cut pretty easily. Still need to get a couple stringers off. I would like to say one thing. You want to keep that protective film on there when you're doing all this. It helps to uh, uh, reinforce it. I still need to put all the little screw holes in there, and I'll do that. Uh, and well, after uh, I'm actually going to stain this and seal this stuff. So I'm gonna um, put this on after I do that, and then I'll put the hinge on. I got the hinge and the uh, magnetic latches that I have for it, and then I'll hang it. And I also have uh, you know what I do with them. Oh uh, well, I got some uh, for the door. Instead of using dowel rods, uh, I got some uh, three-quarter inch by one-sixteenth inch uh, aluminum flat. It's really really flexible. So I'm just going to bend that to uh, the length and then attach it, you know, kind of come out in an L shape on the side. Um, and that should be it. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to get this uh, stained and uh, then I'll be back.